I actually just realized that I never talked about this, the case that comes with the laptop in my script. Gotta love it when a company has some attention to detail. Uh, some people who get this laptop might need a case like this, and it's branded, looks pretty good too. Anyway, I have to be honest. When ASUS sent me this ZenBook 14 to check out, I thought I was going to be spending time with a good laptop with an even better OLED display. Little did I know at the time that I was actually dealing with something even greater than that, because I was not keeping up with all of the news coming out of Intel. And because of that, I needed to take some time to properly get to know this laptop and give you my proper thoughts. So it's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody? This is what worked and what didn't with the ASUS ZenBook 14 and ostensibly with the new and honestly exciting Intel Core Ultra processors. Turns out there is a uh, new driver that I need to get installed on here. So let's go ahead and just do that while we talk about the design. We start as always with first glances and what I really enjoy about this laptop is the sleek form factor. Yeah, this is a design from ASUS that we might have seen before in the ZenBook line, but as someone that typically goes for the smaller laptops, anything that manages to be functional and stylish at 14 inches will always catch my eye. And ASUS is one of those notebook companies that just gets it pretty consistently. The ZenBook 14 is just under 15 millimeters thick and under three pounds in weight, making it a nimble notebook that actually has a lot to offer. But we'll get to more of the internals in a little bit. The lid and chassis are made of lightweight aluminum alloy, and the simple line design that you see on the cover gives it just enough extra character. Although the fact that this thing is light and slight could be character enough. Opening the lid reveals the lovely OLED touchscreen. Yeah, a touchscreen that pumps out not just 3K resolution, which is 2880 by 1800, but also this is capable of 120 Hertz refresh rate. I know that some of you out there just perked up when I said that. So again, stay tuned before we get to the engine of this vehicle. In all honesty though, I don't really use the touch functions on a touchscreen a whole lot. It is nice to have. So if you need to reach over and press something, you certainly can do that. But there's not much more to say about this OLED display aside from it looks gorgeous and provides a wonderful wonderful vivid viewing experience. Right above the display, which does have a minimal bezel by the way, is the 1080p webcam that has a built-in privacy cover, and it's also, as you can see here, the only real splash of color uh, that comes across this entire dark metallic blue body. And then this keyboard, which is fairly standard for an ASUS laptop, uh, fits everything but the number pad given the size of this notebook. Honestly, I'm a big fan of this keyboard. I uh, wrote the entire script for this video using it, and while there is a little bit of like squish to the actual presses, there's still a nice ratio of click feel to quiet sound that makes it an ideal performer both with and without other people around you. But there is a number pad, uh, it's just hidden underneath the touchpad, <laughs> and it's via a press of this corner button up here. I applaud that this feature is still coming on the ZenBooks. I remember when it was first introduced in like 2017 or 2018. But in all honesty, I don't use number pads a whole lot because I'm very used to just using the top number row at this point. That's what happens when you use a lot of 10 keyless uh, mechanical keyboards. And finally, the touchpad is nice and large for a laptop of this size and the glass construction feels good to use. And all of the window shortcuts work smoothly on here. Now, unfortunately, the minimalism that I do enjoy about a laptop like this that is literally called Zen goes beyond the essentials that I just mentioned. It's not to say that the laptop is lacking for most people. It's just that the premise of a laptop like this sporting a new powerful Intel chip, well, it could use a few more opportunities to flex its capabilities. All of that said, the IO is really simple. You have these two USB-C ports over here on the right side, right next to a headphone jack and an HDMI port. Uh, and then on the other side, let me just pop this over, uh, there is one USB-A port over here on the left. That's it. Having the USB-C ports on the right makes it a little weird to use a mouse while you're charging or you have other stuff connected. And personally, I think that a SD card slot would have been nice to have on here considering the ZenBook 14's engine is presumably capable of some video editing. Also, I do wish that the speakers were a bit richer, even if the Harman Kardon tuned units do get pretty loud. I just wish there was just a little bit more of the low ends and bass. Again, in this laptop, there are all of the essentials that you could possibly ask for. There just isn't much else beyond that. And the same actually goes for the internals. I don't usually take out the covers from my review units uh, just for safety reasons. I'll get more comfortable with it in the future. But anyway, under this cover, I do know that there is a swappable SSD and then you have a respectable 32 gigabytes of RAM that is fixed. Without taking off the cover though, I can zoom in and show you that there is one fan right here. It's one fan, and we'll talk about it more soon, but this fan could have used some backup to help make sure that the Intel Core Ultra processor and its GPU could run a bit harder for longer. Because let's not mince words here, Intel has done something special with the new Meteor Lake Intel Core Ultra processors. Now, the naming convention, as I'm sure you've been hearing, is honestly confusing and a little bit weird uh, because Meteor Lake uh, denotes the new Ultra processors and has nothing to do with the chips that we've come to know for the 
the last number of years. But in the Intel Core Ultra lineup, we have the Ultra 5, the Ultra 7, and the Ultra 9. All of these chips feature a new architecture, the new ARC graphics in the H variants at least, and an NPU or neural processing unit that's made for the AI functions a laptop might have. This ZenBook 14 has the Ultra 7 155H, which is more or less middle of the road at least right now, uh, and the Ultra 9 laptops that I really want to get my hands on, um, those are still on the way. So with those specs, how do these actually play out? In a word, impressive. Super impressive, in fact. Now, the main daily functions I've thrown at this laptop, the kind that most of you might be doing, like web browsing, media viewing, typing, and maybe some light creative work, all of those things have worked swimmingly. And for a long time, honestly. I've actually sat on couches or at um, tables in cafes, writing scripts, answering emails, or watching YouTube videos instead of writing scripts and answering emails for what felt like so long. I easily got three to four hours and closer to five or six hours when using the laptop with low power settings. While that is all impressive, I do have to admit that there are laptops from previous Intel Core eras and from prior ZenBook lineups that have managed to pull the same amount of battery life. But where it gets into really impressive territory is when we fire up the GPU. Let's go ahead and illustrate this by heading over to Steam real quick. What if I told you that this level of performance and battery life could be achieved, well, let's say almost, when gaming is thrown into the mix? That happens to be a focus for Intel with the new ARC graphics that come in the Core Ultra H processors, and honestly, it's quite a revelation. Now, before I hype things up too much, we're still talking about integrated graphics here. So lower resolutions and low graphics settings in basically all the current AAA games will be required. But the fact that a game like The Finals or titles like Like a Dragon Gaiden can be comfortably played with tempered expectations is still astounding. And because it is working with the integrated ARC graphics, power draw is way less than with any dedicated NVIDIA or AMD graphics cards. I was able to go for a couple of hours playing Baldur's Gate 3 at low settings at around 1080p resolution, simply plugging in with the included 65 watt USB-C charger that is as portably practical as the laptop itself. And the fast charging is effective in getting the 75 watt hour battery unit in here back up to speed. Things got even more interesting when I decided to do some work on the ZenBook 14. Enter DaVinci Resolve, which helped me get a handful of short form videos done over the last couple of weeks. Sure, they were short and sweet videos, and that meant render times were really fast by nature, but the fact that I was able to comfortably get them done while off the charger was a, still a big deal. That's the thing about PCs most of the time. You only get the best performance in demanding gaming or demanding workflows when you're tethered to the charger. Thankfully, that's actually not quite the case with the Meteor-like processors. Pulling the plug might result in maybe like a 10% decrease in overall power, but that's not the dive off of a cliff that practically any PC before this has made us deal with. Anyway, my workflow on the ZenBook 14 still required half or quarter resolution timelines and some work with proxies for maximum comfort in the timelines. But I still think that if I had this ZenBook over my MacBook for work at a cafe or on a plane, I could make it work. It's all of these experiences that make me really want to get my hands on an Intel Core Ultra 9 with ARC graphics uh, to see if it would manage to bridge the gap. But that remains to be seen, and right now, the potential is clear, and I've learned it using this ZenBook 14. And yet, realizing that potential is something that is up to all of the various app and game developers, which means that the Intel Core Ultra and the ASUS ZenBook 14 fall under the category of early adopter tech. We still need to see how the other processors, especially the Core Ultra 9, fare in the same scenarios, gaming and work. But right now it's clear that games and apps need to be optimized towards what Intel is trying to bring to the table. I mentioned earlier that I was playing a good amount of Baldur's Gate 3 on the Intel Arc graphics here, but that was with plenty of frame drops and more impactfully, uh, audio issues that I kept noticing that are clearly things that need to be patched on both ends. Intel can continue to update their Arc graphics just like Nvidia does for better compatibility, and actually there are some updates that have already come in during the first couple of weeks I've had this ZenBook, and then uh, in the example of Baldur's Gate 3, Larian Studios can provide further optimizations to make the game smoother on Arc in particular. And then on the creative front, Adobe and Blackmagic can work on their various creative tools to make them even better on this particular processor via things like Intel QuickSync optimizations and whatnot. So if all of that actually happens, we could have a real contender that could actually pry the MacBook Pros out of the bags of people like me because there are a ton of them out there for a reason. Again, there just needs to be proper synergy and that just comes with time. And even then, I don't know that the ZenBook 14 would be able to follow through on that potential because it seems the very construction of this laptop kind of limits the GPU in particular from doing its best. Other, let's say, thicker laptops with the same processor and similar specifications are apparently able to squeak out a bit better performance and 
cooler temperatures, even right now the laptop is feeling pretty warm, uh, simply because there's more room, more airflow. Uh, you have to remember, there's just one fan in here, and this body is delightfully, but still, pretty thin. So all of that, plus the fact that the I.O. seems a little bit too minimalistic, uh, honestly, it would be great to see a new Zenbook or a new design uh, that takes a new approach to the internals and thermals to really make these Meteor-like processors flex. So the graphics front is an impressive leap forward, and for some people, that might be worth the price of admission. But there's one more part to the Intel Core Ultra that the brand hopes differentiates their processors. AI. And that's all in the NPU, or Neural Processing Unit, that governs some extra features that are actually quite practical, even if they're things that we've seen before. Windows Copilot is an example, but if you dive into the ASUS software, you can see some potential examples. The MPU takes care of processing certain features like AI noise cancelling, both in and out audio. The same goes for background blurring and replacements in the webcam. Okay, so here is an example of some of the AI features that are uh, afforded this laptop because it has an MPU in the Intel Core Ultra. There are a few things called Windows Studio effects. You can only use them if you have an MPU. Let's start off with background effects. So this is pretty standard, portrait blur right here. Automatic framing, which if I moved over here, slowly go over to me and uh, just make sure that I'm the center of attention as it were. Uh, but then speaking of being the center of attention, I am looking at myself right now, clearly looking down from the webcam, which is up here at the top of the screen. But if I turn on the eye contact feature, boom, you can see the difference right there. It slowly brings my, my eyes up. So it looks like I'm actually looking right at the camera and ostensibly right at you, but I'm looking at myself right now. Let's turn this off one more time. You can see I'm looking down and then slowly rises the eyes back up. This is all crazy stuff, but this is where AI is right now with the NPU. It'll only get better from here, I think. One more time, down. <laughs> And then hit it and it slowly rises my eyes back up. So I'm looking at the camera, which I'm not. AI might be the buzzword of the year for all forms of tech, but we are at the very beginnings of what is possible and what can be done in everyday tech like this laptop. For Intel and its competitors to try and prepare for that future with things like this NPU in the Core Ultra means that we can see that growth in real time over time. So for now, the Intel Core Ultra processors are the main story with this new crop of laptops sporting the updated Meteor Lake chips. That's not to say the laptop at large isn't great, because it definitely is, but they're basically last year's design sporting updated engines, and I'm excited to see those two things come in the middle. I do hesitate to recommend people go out and be the early adopter when it comes to stuff like this, but I do want to highlight the kind of step forward that graphics performance has just had in an integrated GPU. Sure, we have to temper expectations with lower settings in those games, but I would argue that we've been getting conditioned to enjoy gaming without all of that craziness already anyway. And if both Intel and game developers work to make Intel Arc graphics viable, maybe the Intel Core Ultra will power more than just lightweight laptops too. In taking time to learn about these new Meteor Lake processors, I came to really appreciate what ASUS has been doing with their Zenbook lineup. It's just time to add a little bit more to the formula to make this step turn into a leap and a bound. So color me pleasantly surprised and thoroughly impressed with what Intel has managed to do here. And the best endorsement I can make of it right now is that the ASUS ZenBook 14 has provided the most compelling alternative so far to the other 14 inch laptop that until now, I simply couldn't see myself giving up. Whew, a lot to talk about, but it is an exciting time, especially with this news coming out from Intel. But that's going to do it for this video on the ASUS ZenBook 14. Let me know your thoughts on the Meteor Lake processors and all of these laptops that have been coming out with them. Let me know in the comment sections down below. But from there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for kicking it with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.